on World News Tonight. Dealers sanctioned. China sanctions two of the West's main arm dealers, citing that they were supplying arms to Taiwan. Lovers in arms. Belarus pledges to stand by Russia's side if ever a war breaks out between the West and Russia. More strikes. France enters the fifth general strike of the year as the government denies calls to change pension reforms. And let's -a go! The lights go on at Super Nintendo World with Mario and Luigi engaging with fans in real life. This is Adaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and we have news from around the world this Friday night. Now, leading tonight is on the China-Taiwan tensions. China has imposed sanctions on two American defense manufacturers over arms sales to Taiwan, a day after Beijing pledged to take countermeasures in response to Washington's handling of a suspected Chinese surveillance balloon that entered America's airspace and was shot down by U.S. forces earlier this month. China is going after Lockheed Martin and Raytheon. It has put the defense companies on an unreliable entities list over arms sales to Taiwan, banning them from imports and exports related to China. These are Beijing's latest sanctions against the two U.S. firms, and they come as tensions between China and the U.S. have escalated after the U.S. military shot down what it says was a Chinese spy balloon, and a day after Beijing warned of countermeasures against relevant U.S. entities that undermine China's sovereignty and security. Neither company sells defense products to China. Raytheon declined to comment. Lockheed could not be immediately reached for comment. Lockheed makes the F-22 Raptor fighter jet, which flew the mission to shoot down the alleged Chinese spy balloon off the coast of South Carolina, using the AIM-9X Sidewinder missile made by Raytheon. Beijing also banned the companies from further investment in China, barred senior management from entering the country, canceled residence permits for any staff in China, and imposed fines that are double the contracted amounts of their arms sales to Taiwan. It was not clear how China would enforce such fines, which it said must be paid within 15 days. Last February, China sanctioned the two firms over a $100 million arms sale to Taiwan, a self-ruled island which Beijing views as a breakaway province. The U.S. does not sell weapons to China. However, it is bound by the 1979 Taiwan Relations Act to provide Taiwan with the means to defend itself, and U.S. weapons sales always attract China's anger. U.S. President Joe Biden says that he plans to talk to his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping to get to the bottom of the recent dispute over suspected Chinese spy balloons. But he says he is not sorry for shooting down the Chinese flying objects. U.S. President Joe Biden has said he does not apologize for shooting down earlier this month what Washington has called a high-tech Chinese spy balloon. On Thursday, in his most extensive public remarks on the incident, the president added, however, that he will talk with Chinese leader Xi Jinping on the matter. We're not looking for a new Cold War, but I make no apologize. I make no apologies, and we will compete. And we'll, be res we'll responsibly manage that competition so that it doesn't veer into conflict. He said that particular balloon was used for surveillance, but that the three other aerial objects that the U.S. military shot down in the following days were likely not foreign spy crafts. Well, they uh, tracked three unidentified objects, one in Alaska, Canada, and over Lake Huron in the Midwest. I gave the order to take down these three objects due to hazards to civilian commercial air traffic and because we could not rule out the surveillance risk of sensitive facilities. Biden has come under mounting pressure from both the Democratic and Republican parties to share more national intelligence on what he says was an incursion from China. And we shot it down, sending a clear message, clear message. The violation of our sovereignty is unacceptable. We'll act to protect our country, and we did. It has caused a diplomatic rift with Beijing, with Secretary of State Antony Blinken recently even cancelling a rare visit to China. Beijing has accused Washington of overreacting, claiming that the balloon was a weather balloon that flew astray, and that American balloons had flown over Chinese territory, which the Biden administration denies.
Georgia's grand jury is investigating former U.S. President Donald Trump's attempt to overturn his 2020 election laws. Part of its reports are saying that some of the witnesses have lied. A report from a special grand jury probing allegations former President Donald Trump tried to overturn his 2020 election laws in Georgia says some witnesses in the investigation may have lied under oath. That's according to portions of the report made public Thursday by a judge in Fulton County, though the specific recommendations on potential criminal charges against Trump or his associates remain sealed. The Trump investigation is underway. Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis formed the special grand jury in 2021 shortly after it was revealed Trump called Georgia's top election official, Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, and pressured him to, quote, find precisely 11,780 votes, sufficient to reverse the Republican president's loss in the state. Democrat Joe Biden won the state of Georgia in 2020. There's no way we lost Georgia. There's no way. The rigged, that was a rigged election. Trump claimed without evidence that the election was tainted by fraud and corruption, claims that propelled Trump supporters to storm the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. A congressional committee investigating that attack found that Trump had been told by top advisors, including his own attorney general, Bill Barr, that his claims of fraud in Georgia and elsewhere were false. And based on our uh, review of it, including the interviews of the key witnesses, uh, the Fulton County uh, allegations were had no merit. Nonetheless, Trump pressed the Georgia Secretary of State to, quote, find enough votes to reverse the result. Raffensperger later told congressional investigators that he could not give the president what he wanted. You know, we just followed the law and we followed the Constitution. And at the end of the day, President Trump came up short. But I had to be faithful to the Constitution. And that's what I swore an oath to do. The Fulton County grand jury was able to compel testimony from several close Trump allies, including attorney Rudy Giuliani and Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. Both fought subpoenas until they were forced by the courts to appear. But the sections of the report released Thursday say little. The jurors heard from 75 witnesses, and those suspected of lying to the grand jury were not named publicly. Willis last month said she opposed the release of the jury report, saying that charging decisions were, quote, imminent. I know we do have this common interest. We want to make sure that everyone is treated fairly. And we think for future defendants to be treated fairly, it's not appropriate at this time to have this report released. Because you having seen that report, decisions are imminent. Trump, who has launched another run for the White House in 2024, has denied wrongdoing and accused Willis of targeting him for political reasons. If Willis were to seek criminal charges, the district attorney would need to obtain indictments from a second grand jury. If Trump is charged, he would be the first president in U.S. history to face a criminal indictment. The Georgia investigation is one of several threatening Trump, including separate U.S. Justice Department inquiries into his retention of classified materials after leaving office, as well as his efforts to invalidate the 2020 election results. There's another country pairing up with Russia at the moment. Now, Belarus's President Alexander Lukashenko said that he would only order his troops to fight alongside ally Russia if another country launches an attack against Belarus. Belarus has warned it will join Russia in the war if attacked. President Alexander Lukashenko made the comments on Thursday during an impromptu press conference in Minsk. He also accused the United States of not wanting peace in Ukraine and of pressuring European countries, who he says do. Lukashenko said his country did not want to fight, but was prepared to, if provoked. We are peaceful people. We know what war is. We do not want war. There is no way we are planning to send our troops into Ukraine unless you show aggression to Belarus from there. That's all. That's my reply, given a long time ago, and I still stand by it. We will give you no such chance, but should you dare to set a foot on our soil, the response will be terrifying. The Westerners know which response it will be and which weapons would be used. A terrifying response. Lukashenko, who is one of Russian President Vladimir Putin's closest allies, said Moscow had never asked Minsk to go to war in Ukraine. Belarus did, however, allow the Kremlin to launch last year's failed offensive on the Ukrainian capital Kyiv from their country. 
Recent joint Air Force drills between Russia and Belarus have raised fears that Minsk could be preparing to take a more active role in the conflict. Lukashenko called on Biden to meet with Putin in Belarus and end the war. Rescuers in Turkey are fighting day and night to save millions of lives who are trapped under the rubble in Turkey and Syria earthquake. But at the moment, a UN, a UN has pledged a large amount of sum in order to aid the victims. Emergency teams in Kamara and Mirage work urgently to free Elena Olmez. The 17-year-old spent 248 hours trapped in the rubble of a collapsed building. More than 10 days after the earthquake struck, her rescue on Thursday is a miracle. But scenes like this have become the exception, with most search and rescue teams finding bodies. Here in Antakya, the news is grim as family members wait to identify the deceased. As teams continue to search the rubble, earthquake survivors are in desperate need of humanitarian aid and medical care. In Hatay, a mix of Turkish and international teams work together to deliver hot meals, clothes and blankets to those in need. As the focus now shifts from rescue to reconstruction and support for the displaced, NATO has promised its help. The Red Cross is warning the humanitarian crisis caused by the quake will continue for months and has launched an appeal for more assistance. We're going into a short commercial break now. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, the ranks of marchers were thinner, but all across France, hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets for a fifth day against an unpopular pension reform. There's no let-up in the epic battle between French unions and the government over a proposed pension reform. Hundreds of thousands turned out across the country on a fifth day of protests against plans to raise the retirement age from 62 to 64. While the numbers in some places were down compared to earlier rallies, unions say support remains strong. Anger over the reforms boiled over in Paris, where a small number of students damaged property and clashed with the police. The government has not changed its plans at all yet, despite polls showing consistently high public opposition to the proposed reform. Unions are planning another day of action on the 7th of March, when they promise to bring France to a standstill. Tesla is to recall 362,000 U.S. vehicles to update its full self-driving beta software after U.S. regulators said that the driver assistance system did not adequately adhere to traffic safety laws and could cause crashes. Tesla says it's recalling 362,000 vehicles after U.S. regulators said on Thursday that its full self-driving driver assistance system could cause crashes. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said the Tesla software allows a vehicle to exceed speed limits or travel through intersections in an unlawful or unpredictable manner, increasing the risk of a crash. Tesla will release an over-the-air software update free of charge, and the electric vehicle maker said it's not aware of any injuries or deaths that may be related to the recall issue. This is a fresh setback for Tesla's driver assistance system, which faces growing regulatory and public scrutiny. Chief Executive Elon Musk has repeatedly missed his own targets to achieve self-driving capability, which he has touted as a potential cash cow. While Tesla's autopilot feature assists with steering, accelerating, and braking, the company says its full self-driving feature is a more advanced system that is, quote, designed to provide more active guidance and assisted driving, though still requiring the driver's attention. U.S. Senators Ed Markey and Richard Blumenthal, both the Democrats, said the recall was long overdue adding Tesla must finally stop overstating the real capabilities of its vehicles. The electric car maker could not be reached for comment, but Musk tweeted on Thursday that the word recall for an over-the-air software update is anachronistic and just flat wrong. Tesla shares, which have been on a tear so far in 2023, closed lower on the day. 
Police fired tear gas to disperse hundreds of supporters of Senegal opposition leader Usman Sonko after he left the court in the capital Dhaka where hearings are underway in a libel case against him. Police fired tear gas in the Senegalese capital on Thursday to disperse hundreds of supporters of opposition leader Usman Sonko. It's the latest sign of unrest in the West African country and took place with hearings in a libel case against Sonko underway. He's seen as a potential challenger for President Macky Sall in elections set to take place next year. If Sall seeks a third term in Senegal, which opponents say is unconstitutional, Critics, especially among Sonko's young supporters, say they're disillusioned with the crackdown on the president's opponents and protests against him. We had confidence in Macky Sall. He disappointed us, said this supporter, who called Sonko the hope of the youth. Senegal has long been seen as a bastion of democracy in an unstable region. But violent clashes broke out in 2021 when Sonko was arrested over sexual assault allegations. He's now facing trial in that case. His supporters and some opposition leaders see Sonko's legal troubles as attempts to discredit a popular rival. Sonko denies all wrongdoing and says the charges are politically motivated. As for his libel case, which involves allegedly accusing the tourism minister of embezzlement, it has been adjourned until March. The Parliament of Spain has given the green light to a law that makes it easier for people to legally change their gender. The law was given final approval by the Spanish Senate after passing a vote of 191 in favour and 60 against. Spain's Parliament has approved a self-ID trans law. La ley trans es ley. The law allows people to change their gender on identification documents without the need for psychological or other medical appraisals from the age of 14. It was an emotional moment for many activists, including Mark Ambrole, who was watching from the gallery. While trans activists celebrated, anti-trans law activists protested outside parliament, chanting the trans law is misogyny and urging Equality Minister Irene Montero to resign. The bill has been heavily criticized by the conservative opposition and so-called gender-critical feminist activists, like Patricia Bilbao, who say self-ID puts women at risk. They argue that it could be used by predatory men to gain access to single-sex spaces, such as toilets or changing rooms. We are here to support the rights of women, as they are completely erasing us with these misogynistic laws, with the trans law being approved today. There was no public debate. They have not been listening to us. They have not listened to feminist collectives, and they want to sideline us. More than a dozen nations, including Malta, Ireland, Argentina and New Zealand, already allows trans self-ID, according to a recent UN report. But despite the growing acceptance of self-ID, the issue is proving controversial in Europe, echoing fierce and often polarised debate about transgender rights in the United States and Britain. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Japan says Street Rocket, the country's first new medium lift launcher in three decades, failed to lift off because two secondary booster engines strapped to side of the space vehicle didn't ignite. The Australian federal government and the Queensland state government stated that they would spend a combined 1.7 billion Australian dollars to build new venues and refurnish existing ones ahead of the 2032 Olympics in Brisbane. The death toll from Cyclone Gabriel rose to seven and New Zealanders were told that the number was likely to rise because emergency services have not yet made contact with hundreds of communities. Alpine becomes the last Formula One team to unveil the 2023 Challenger in the presence of their all-French driver lineup, Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly. They also revealed that World Cup winner and former Real Madrid coach Zinedine Zidane would join them as their global ambassador. The Central Asian nation's government said a series of avalanches has killed 10 more people in eastern Tajikistan, bringing the death toll to over the past two days to 20 and forcing hundreds of families from their homes.
that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again on Monday for more news around the globe. And just in case you missed to watch any of the stories we had tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Now, the lights went on at Super Nintendo World as Universal Studios Hollywood unveiled its latest theme park edition. We leave you tonight with all the game's colorful mushrooms, turtles, and of course, Mario and Luigi interacting with all. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a great weekend.